Hello everyone! In this video, I'm gonna try repeating the synthesis of dibenzylidine acetone. For this synthesis, we're gonna need benzaldehyde, acetone, sodium hydroxide, these are the reagents, while the solvents and the reaction medium are going to be isopropanol, aka isopropyl alcohol, and distilled water. So, Let's get right into the synthesis. Alright, so it's time for the synthesis. The first thing we're gonna do is add the alcohol to the beaker, but first I'm gonna quickly rinse it. Well, rinse it. I already rinsed it, but I'm gonna dry it slightly. So yes, 250 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. To the reaction beaker. Alright, it's 50. First part. I think I'm gonna use a funnel for this. Slightly too much. Fifty. Perfectly. It's a hundred and fifty milliliters now. This is way too much. This is way too much. I'm using a graduated cylinder now because last time I did this synthesis I added everything to like well not precisely which contributed to a total tragedy. It's, it's like less than 200 ml, so I'm gonna use it now in excess. The last bit. All right, the last bit of alcohol is added. I think it may be even slightly too much. All right, it's not enough. It's not just enough. So now I'm gonna put, uh, like put this to the side. Now I am going to prepare sodium hydroxide solution. So yeah, sodium hydroxide. It's gonna be 18 grams of the hydroxide here. And 150 milliliters of water. All right, it's just fine. So now let's add the water, distilled water. Important is distilled water. Hundred and fifty milliliters. All right. This is... All right. We're not gonna use a scale anymore for this prep. So. Let's dissolve the hydroxide. It 
heats up the water quite a bit and makes it steam. But don't worry, the, these steams aren't sodium hydroxide, obviously. This is just water vapor. Right, it's nearly dissolved. So now what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna put away these two flasks here. Because we're not gonna be using them right now. Take this away. I'll get a beaker. Mm. Now we're gonna have to take a Manzala high. It has a great fruity odor. So now 32 milliliters the benzoic aldehyde aka benzaldehyde it tends to you know, oxidize in air to benzoic acid so now we are going to add the sodium hydroxide solution and now we have to quickly add 10 milliliters of acetone we're gonna take two full pipettes because it's well 10 milliliters by two by bats. Now we're gonna have to stir it firmly. I'm gonna take this away and turn on my hot plate. It has to be heated to like 50C to get the best results out of this reaction. And as you can see, the solution is becoming yellow. It's getting warm. I'm gonna be right back. So this perspective is better. I'm gonna have to firmly stir it for quite a long amount of time just to let this should completely react. And remember, the solution has to be warm, not hot. We don't want to boil the reaction mixture. All right, so. I'm gonna be right back after stirring. All right, so this is our reaction like half an hour later. This is our dibenzylidine acetone suspension. It may look like red here, but well, that's because of my bad lighting. It is actually yellow, but not yellow enough. <laughs> We're gonna crush it out. Crushing out is a common technique of precipitating out a dissolved substance just by adding another solvent in which it is completely insoluble. In. I'm gonna do it by adding water because as we all know, or maybe not, the benzolidine acetone is completely insoluble in water. So now, I'm adding water. The mixture. And I would say now, it is the best, the best, uh, this is like, 
the most we're gonna ever get from the solution. But I'm gonna try getting out even more because, well, adding more water doesn't do any harm. Even if we add like too much. Yeah, it still crashes out. Because for in the isopropyl now, there is still some dissolved. Alright, I I would say we're gonna stop here. So yeah. Stir it. As you can see, it's not just a colored solution, it's cloudy because of a precipitate. So now we're gonna filter everything off. So for filtration, I'm gonna use a double filter medium. First is gonna be some tissue paper stuffed on the bottom of the funnel. But the main... Here's going to mark the main filter, this coffee filter. So now, let's pour all the liquid. I can already see some Zybenzol, you have some chunks falling on the filter. And I think the filter got clogged. <laughs> Because of the chunks. Yeah, it got clogged. It got clogged up. Oh, yeah, 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 it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's not. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna grab my bottle, I'm gonna be storing it in, and I'll be back. Alright, so change of plans. First, I'm gonna scoop out using a spoon the dibenzyl dinastone. And then I will only use my filtering setup just to wash everything, to wash out the impurities. I think it's like wet, so it's gonna be a better idea to do it like this. Here have some like the best quality chemistry ASMR like if you like cooking you should try chemistry. <laughs> Just don't like the spoon. There is still some like a lot, a lot left. So I'm gonna scoop it out and I'll be right back. So now I'm driving off all the water that was still absorbed onto the dibenzolidinas zone. When everything boils off, I'm gonna put it into this amber glass bottle. So here we have it! Here we have our final product, dibenzolidin acetone. It's packed in this amber glass bottle and it's also covered with aluminum foil. To prevent its oxidation in air. Well, uh, no, it doesn't oxidize in air. I confuse it with benzaldehyde. To prevent its reaction with the UV light. Because 
when in contact with UV light, it absorbs it and forms um, uh, different isomers of butane, cyclobutane, and other stuff that definitely is not dibenzylidinastone. So this is how to make dibenzylidinastone. Pretty dry. In a bottle. So, I would say this project is a success.